Hello, everyone watching at home. You're with Adelaide Eternal, bringing you our monthly Eternal tournament this month of May. It was vintage. And we are in the booth at the moment with Sarvan McClinton and Beckett Wall. G'day, guys. So... In this particular tournament, we're in round three at the moment, we have our one and only Beckett Wolf on the left, don't we? That's me. So this one is going to be interesting. You can give us a little bit of an insight into your play decisions and your sideboarding decisions and all of these things. And you're up against Chad Taylor on the right, so let's have a look at the deck lists. So Chad Taylor is on the pretty much stock standard Eldrazi list, so... Right now, Eldrazi has really boiled down in the past based on, you know, Jayco Eldrazi and there's other versions of colourless Eldrazi and the like. It's really boiled down to white being the best. So it's uh, uh, Thalia, both versions of Thalia, that is, uh, hating on your opponent's spells and their lands and their creatures and the colourless beasties like Thought Not Seer. And Reality Smasher, at the end of the day, it's operating on the axis of using thorns to slow your opponents down, using other effects, you know, things like Null Rod type effects and other things just to uh, prevent your opponent from being able to act their game plan. And at the same time, you get to tempo them out with creatures. The difference is, in the past, decks like Death and Taxes in Legacy revolve around small creatures that disrupt your opponent. In Vintage, the Eldrazi deck disrupts your opponent, but with large creatures. You know, 4-4s four and 5-5s five fives and Haste and Trample. And, you know, it's no longer the case that Death and Taxes is just about pecking in for two with little hate bears. It's really, really a, a fearsome opponent to have. Mm -hmm. Less hate and a bit more gumption to it. Um, it's a great deck, very streamlined. Reminds me a bit of Shops. Uh, you know, it's got a lot of little pecky stuff and a lot of thorns and such, but um, less interaction with artifacts. Really streamlined deck. Well, let's look at another streamlined deck. So we have... Who's that? Beckett Wolf. Ah. Who's this? So he is running an Oath deck. Maybe you can tell us about it. So I'm running Bug Oath. Um, it's, yeah, it's something I've been playing for a while. I've got um, the Tinker package in there as well. Um... Sorry, Time Vault package in there. So Tezzeret, Time Vault, Voltaic Key as an alternate win con. Um, yeah, I get to I get to run a bit of um, Runescar Demon, which I like. So I'm running two Grizzle Brands, brands one Runescar Demon. The idea is Grizzle Brand is the best creature to get. I think that that's pretty, you know, mm -hmm. in, undisputed. But Runescar will let you search up a Time Walk so that... Because um, obviously... They're legendary, so you can't just keep hitting the same Grizzle brand because you'll uh, lose to the legendary rule. So you can keep flipping and hope to get Rune Scarred um, and Time Walk and do it again. So what if you pronounce their names differently and one's Grizzle brand and one's Grizzle brand? Then they're oh, different. Well then it's totally different cards. You can have both you? on the battlefield at the same time. So I started running Regrowth as well to aid with this uh, Rune Scarred Demon idea, so that if the Time Walk gets put in the bin. I can regrowth it back. And regrowth has been pretty decent either way just because when I trigger my oath, I get to have a good selection of cards and regrowth gets a lot stronger. I like to play my oath that even if they have the priest out or the graph diggers out, I still trigger the oath, get a big graveyard, switches on my Yorgmoth, switches on my um, delve cards like uh, Treasure Cruise and Dig Through Time, switches on my regrowth. So, um, yeah. So a lot of... Oath, oath decks are obviously all built in a variety of manners. So you would say the thing that sets your bug oath apart from others is the use of regrowth in there. I would say so. There's a few. There's a few lists that are running like four of Rune Scar Demon as their critters, and mm. they hope to just keep cycling um, time walks. But of course, four mana. Not you don't always have four mana to cast regrowth and cast time walk, and sometimes your regrowth gets put in the bin as well. <laughs> so. Um, but I found Rune's got to be really good, even if that little synergy uh, didn't work. Being able to just have a free Demonic Tutor is really good, because Demonic Tutor, as good as it is, it's even better when it costs zero mana. So, of course, you're doing this in upkeep. So, if you get the Rune's Card Demon, you get the trigger before you draw, you find the best card that you want to draw, and you get an additional draw on top of it, and you've got all your mana untapped, it's usually enough, like... You know, especially against Dredge or something, when you can go, okay, I'm going to search for that Ravenous Trap. I'm going to search for that Leyline of the Void. Um, 
you know, you don't need to necessarily do the regrowth time walk. And I think that's what I really like about the rune scard. So just the cheeky one of in there. And um, I guess we get down to the games, mate. Sounds good. Well, I have a few questions to Ooh. pick your brain whilst we're whilst we're watching you guys shuffle up. So regrowth was not recently, but um, in the last couple of years, it was unrestricted. And that doesn't always happen for cards in vintage. You know, there was an unrestriction of Gush back in 2007, and, and now it's restricted again. Mm. But uh, regrowth was unrestricted. Have you seen many lists trying to leverage more than one regrowth? No, um, not really. I when, when I run it, I think definitely more than one is too many. I like it as a one of. Um, is know, it kind just, of like your Snapcaster Mage? That's not a creature. Yeah, it just lets you know. It just lets. It's just for the DT really, just so that I can um, tutor for it um, off the Rune card. And if I can't do that synergy, it's still fine you know it's a bit expensive in the modern vintage meta like when you've got mm. all these taxing effects having to cast a two mana sorcery that doesn't pitch to force of will you know that to then cast another thing it's a lot and i just don't think it's amazing i'd be really interested to run and i really respect that four runes guard four regrowth deck mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that's a very sort of tight deck with a very specific um angle that, that it's playing and I'm just um, I guess having a, having a try of that style but I'm not devoted to it so I've really liked one of Regrowth I've got no plans to add any additional ones Fair enough. Do you, want, do you have any plans to keep this hand? I've got plans to keep this hand I think there's a bit land heavy uh, Yep. So there's a lot but, of land heaviness uh, on Chad's side as well And I right. think there's a mox, green mox but you know playing against the Thales and such as, as we said in earlier videos I'm a bit more conservative in my keeps. I like to keep a lot more. I don't like mulling. I like to, um, you know, trust that I'll draw the correct cards. And um, I think I've got a preordain as well. So I'm happy to keep lands, mox, and preordain because hopefully I can dig into the, the right spells and hopefully I won't get locked out by Thalia effects. Mm. Well, speaking of Thalia effects, I think we have Thalia right here, right now. And I'm pretty sure that's um, Cabinet of Souls. Named, named human. Yeah, human seems good. It's, what, Containment Priest, Thalia, both types of Thalia. Yeah, you know? the second type of Thalia is... Re I'm actually really scared of it, and I play around the second type of Thalia quite a lot. So for those at home, the Wall of Glare over there is Thalia, Guardian of Thraven, who, or Thalia, depends on how you want to pronounce it. Thalia. You know, correctly or how it's written. Um, <laughs> <laughs> apparently I was told that it's actually Thalia, just like the actual real-world modern-day name Thalia, which is spelt Thalia. <laughs> just food for thought. I don't know. I don't know whether or not we should uh, we should change ourselves. Ah, oh, jeez. Now you're questioning it. We're we're gonna be oh, we're we're gonna be uh, having an existential crisis now that we've been saying Thalia all this time. Anyway, so um, Miss Guardian of Thraben is on the battlefield, preventing everything uh, that you cast from uh, being cast on curve. So everything costs one more. So that Mox Emerald cost one. You remind, obviously, Chad, that his mox costs one as well. Yeah, so and I'm no hoping, thought, not see you. <laughs> I was hoping that that made the difference. I was like, oh, oh maybe no he hasn't calculated, you. but oh, uh, second failure. it did not make the difference. No. Well, here, as you can see, just like Grizzlebrand and Grizzlebrand, you're going to have the two different types of Thalia on the battlefield. Maybe one's Thalia, the other's Thalia. Yeah. Unfortunately, no legend rule here applies. So if you are on the other side of the board of a... Um, what what's she called? Something other. Thalia, one's one's big, Thalia, big Thalia, and the other one's Talia. Okay, so when you're on the other side of Talia, all yeah. of your all of your <laughs> lands come into play tapped if they're non-basic. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, or is it basic as well? I don't know. No, oh. no, basic lands come in untapped. Non-basics right. and creatures come creatures. in tapped. Creatures and the creatures are actually really relevant for me because if I do get to um, trigger oath and get a big fatty life linker that I'm hoping to block with and gain some life back, I actually it comes in tapped. So yeah. I have to um, wait another turn, and that can be really relevant. relevant. I've just decided to, due to the Thalia and Thalia, um, I don't think I could do anything real explosive that turn with the with the entering tapped and with the uh -oh. taxing. So I thought I five mana. What is that? Reality smash. Oh dear. Yeah, it's not not a good time for you right now. It's a good time, but I've I've got two moxes here. If I hit a basic land drop, I could have a fair amount of mana. Toxic deluge will be good. Toxic deluge. I think I'm running one main board toxic deluge in this list. Toxic deluge for five. Toxic deluge for five is <clears> actually what you got to do. Actually, a bit of a blowout here to be honest. I can't so remember. you're on. Isn't eight. it? It's really exciting. Actually, I can't remember <laughs> what. Well, I, th I think I got 
Sensei's divining top there in hand. Oh, That's so dirtily. Not good. <laughs> Sensei's dirtily top. That is ready coming to, out, I think. Yeah, ready to die in the face of this. You know, Oath doesn't save you here, obviously, from lethal. No, it doesn't. That's the thing, you know, um, a lot of people think this is a really good matchup for me, but this happens all the time. And um, yeah. to be honest, that was a really good hand from uh, Chad, you know, to be able to have um, a real good curve there. Turn one, oh, Talia, turn two, Thal- Talia, Talia. <laughs> <laughs> and then turn, th- that's a turn three um, smasher. Yeah. And this keeps you at one life, right? Well, because you're on eight and, I've got and you're going to get attacked by seven yeah. for seven. And I'm not getting um, tapped, my lands tapped, so yeah. I get one more cheeky little turn. To try and answer the reality smasher. There's ways, you know. Yeah, time walking into an oath. Yeah. No, yes, yeah, yep, time, time walking into walk, oath. To time walk either. oath. Although, yeah, yeah, I can time walk oath. Uh, or, you know, time walk regrowth and then time walk again. Well, regrowth and oath both have very similar Regrowth wording. and oath both yeah. do. Yeah, there we go, the trip. <laughs> So down, so down to one I go unless we <laughs> unless we get visited by another smasher. Yes, this is uh, going to be pretty tight. You know, obviously, whenever you're in these kind of scenarios, you're thinking about your outs and you're playing to those outs. And on camera, when we can't see your hand, we just go, "Well, these are the possible things that could possibly get you out of the scenario." But that doesn't mean it's likely. Mm. No, um, definitely. And and you know, with the taxing, it just becomes a whole lot harder as well. So down I go. <laughs> down to one. And I'm actually really scared of uh, Wasteland here as well, I think. Yeah, Soul it would really fine. set you back. Yeah. Use it, you've got to use the Wasteland, yeah. you know. So you're wasting the green through black. There's so many black doesn't sources. Matter. It doesn't got, really matter. Yeah, yeah, green and black and blue. And so here we go. What do we need to draw here? We need to draw a mana source, obviously. Rune Sky Demon in my hand as well. Oh, embarrassing. Top. Oh, top's embarrassing. This, well, you're not going to get out of that yeah. one. Yep. <laughs> and that's all she wrote. So, the yeah, there's the little human uh, paper slip down the bottom because Kavanaugh Sullivan is naming human. Uh, pretty common. It's a human or a Drazi usually, isn't it? Yeah. There's so sometimes when versions of this deck run Spirit of the Labyrinth and you can name Spirit, I guess. It's yeah. Not common, but... Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just want to name it because you, you, oh, you're forced to name it for the colour. Yeah. Um, just because you need the white... To, um, to to hit it. So obviously for the Eldrazi deck, you know, containment priests are important in the Oath matchup, and uh, the the Eldrazi sideboarding is pretty linear. So let's look at the uh, Oath sideboarding. So what do you generally? It might be different in this matchup, match particular match, but what do you generally take out and put in? Well, I don't really like um, mental missteps. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, they don't hit anything except Sol Ring. That's right. <laughs> um, I think I want to keep in my Time Vault combo because I just want a free win every now and again. Yeah. Uh, well, you're not going to win the fair way against Eldrazi. Usually. No, no, I'm not. So I keep my Time Vault combo in. I definitely want Dread of Night, which is one mana enchantment black. I really liked it. Gives Neg 1, Neg 1 to all white creatures. It's good against the Mentor because mm-hmm. um, it kills their tokens. It's good against m- small failure. And it's good against small fire. And to be honest, it's good against, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to just run it out. And if they have Containment Priest and Talia, big Talia, mm. then it, it actually minimizes the clock a lot. I've got two Eruptor Ks and I've got a Toxic Deluge in Cyborg to complement a main board Toxic Deluge. So hopefully, and I've also got a Dismember, so hopefully enough spot removal. But I don't think... Sp- Spot removing is really where I want to be necessarily. I can trade one for one, but eventually they'll top deck a big fatty and I won't have the removal for it necessarily. Mm. So, you know, they're better than other cards, like a few of the small cantrips that I don't want to get taxed. Yep. But I want to keep in my big win cons. Like I want to keep in show and tell. I want to keep in time vault. Obviously want to keep in um, oath and um, take out a few of the dirtly uh, cantrippy Sensei's Divining Top um Mental misstep preordains. So well, not 100 percent sure what I did side out. Yeah. Well, I I can see in your list that your mind break trap is in the side. Mine's in the main. But I make a comment that in general I keep mind break trap in in the main. Mm. Um, I don't know whether you want to bring it in from the side, but I keep it in in my main because against Eldrazi, a very very common opener that completely wrecks you is land. Mox, Mana Crypt, Thought Not Seer. 
And with Mindbreak Trap, you can exile the Thought Knot Seer because it's the third spell on their opening turn. Well, I do have one Mindbreak Trap main board, one Mindbreak oh, Trap perfect. sideboard, and I think keep I one keep in, one in, but not two, but not two. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's just one of those things where even though Mindbreak Trap isn't a good card, you know, four mana usually to cast it um, isn't good against Eldrazi because it's just there you yeah. go. So I've taken out Mana Drain, which and preordains missteps and tops. Top. Yep. So I think that's I'm pretty happy with that. Mana drain, great spell. I love to mana drain a big old um thought not seer, but Cavern of Souls yeah. makes it tough and it's too inconsistent. And and you know, getting the double blue and oh, um, against wastelands against, and the like. Yeah, wastelands and, and taxes. And you know, you could live the dream, but even if you do get the counter, like what are the chances the planet align and then you Need that colors mana desperately. It's yeah. Well, the, it's a the thing is, usually you're gonna you're gonna cast that on say turn two or three, and they've either deployed all of their threats early, or the in the world where they don't play a threat turn one, don't play a threat turn two, and then finally play something on turn three. You're already you've already won. Mm. Uh, if if for me the Eldrazi if the Eldrazi player doesn't play a turn one threat, you're happy. You're very happy. If they don't play a turn two threat. You've won the game. I think so, I've actually, I think <laughs> I've actually taken out matter. Mana Drain since playing this tournament. Yeah, I've switched my deck up um, a fair bit to Punishing Oath, yep. Splashing for Red for Dak, and Punishing Fires and um, Ancient Grudge in the main board. Well, Fires are great against Containment Priests. Yeah, for sure. Um, but you know that's all right. This list has got other things. This list has got more abrupt decays and deluges, so it, it does have some things to. Um, to fight the Eldrazi, of course it's got Eyes of Druid, so hopefully mm. I draw that. Let's uh, let's just reshuffle that. <laughs> it's a bit of a time walk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we saw time walk, so let's uh, let's give that a proper <laughs> randomization there. <laughs> yeah, so the note that we were talking about before was that if Eldrazi doesn't do anything in the first two turns, you're gonna you're usually going to win anyway because mm. your deck's just faster and better. Um, but if they do something on turn one that you can't stop, Mindbreak Trap is there to save you. And, uh, you know, that's why you still run Force of Will, even though it's generally not a good card. A, you just need yeah. it sometimes. Yeah, you need not, it to stop their broken is, opening. It's tough. But there's times where it just turns up all aces for them and they end up having caverns and everything. Uh, well, so that hand does have to go back. It does. A, I think there's two lands, but Runescard. not much going on. Oh, all that mana on the right. Yep, so that one goes back. So that, that is a perfect example of the Eldrazi deck where if it draws all of its mana and none of its threats or all its threats and, and the wrong coloured mana, i.e. no white sources and or no coloured sources, you if you can't actually deploy something on turn one or turn two, you have to you have to mull because that's the whole point of the deck. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, a lot of the games turn into dirtly grindy top decks, but you're not hoping for that as an Eldrazi player. No. You, you're hoping for explosive starts that then dirtle out once you've got the thread in there. Yeah, absolutely. So there was, uh, what was that, an Oath of Druids? Oath of Druids <laughs> slip, He's, you know, he knows what I'm on now. <laughs> I think he did already. <laughs> yeah, it's probably relatively plain to see there when it's like bug colours. Yes. Um, well, what else would you run green for these days? Well, bug colours, I mean, Fast you know, bombs? Trigon Predator is too old. It's so old school. But oh, are you going to seven? <laughs> Yeah, let's not go to seven. Okay, let's not yeah. lose the game instantly. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I've got Mindbreak Trap. Oh, yeah. If you get him with Mindbreak Trap, I'll be happy. But if he's on a mile to six, he's probably not going to be trappable. <laughs> he's not going to deploy three threat, three cards on turn one. Ponder, yeah. Ponder, no, Ponder a... finding a force of will here or something is, is sometimes... Ponder to useful. strip mine... It's a lot of land. Strip mine, island, and Thought. trop. Wow. And I do like myself land against Eldrazi, and I do like strip mine, but is it do too you much? Do now? No. Yeah. And do I want to be doing that for the rest of the game? It just If your hand is gas, then maybe having the lands is good, but I think shuffling is correct. Because you need to win the game, right? That's right. Just playing around wastelands by playing lots of lands yeah, is exactly. not necessarily the no, way to win. That's right. I mean, <laughs> I still just lose to Thought Not See, right? Yeah. So here, and let's thought see not he seer he does have. So I've drawn abrupt decay off that ponder draw, so I'm pretty happy about that. Abrupt decay is a bit sad when they got thought not seer. Ah, uh, this is a good sign for you. 
playing just playing land and passing is rough for the Eldrazi player. So. Oh, you get Forbidden Orchard and Oath. Well, okay, well, I guess that's all she wrote. It's pretty good. Sometimes Oath oh, yeah. is a good card yeah. against yeah. Eldrazi. Is this where the where when you're Eldrazi, you just kind of uh, let me look at your sideboard, uh, let me look at your graveyard, let's look at what you got out, and then I'll concede. We, flick, <laughs> we flicked through the video, and I was trying to figure out if I'd lost 2-0, if I'd won 2-0, or what, because I, I couldn't remember it. And we were like, oh, were we playing friendlies afterwards? And, um, yeah, I totally forgot just slamming turn 2-0 down. Yeah. So. Um, incorrect to not attack with a spirit token, I guess. Incorrect not to attack. Is that big Thalia, though? And That's big Thalia. The logic yep. there is I'm already going to trigger the oath. And yep. um, I, I think here leaving mana open and a bluffing containment priest is worthwhile. Yeah. So so I've done this in upkeep. Uh, and there's Grizzle Brand, so that my Grizzle Brand didn't enter tap, just yep. in case shenanigans happened. And I also figured eventually I want to get rid of the Thalia either way because I want my lands to come in um, tapped and uh, untapped. So I did the Abrupt Decay in the untapped step, uh, in the upkeep, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then I triggered the Oath, and now I'm going for a smooth 7, and he looks like he's scooping them up. Yep. Well, that's a perfect example of one of a game where if the old Rise you play doesn't do anything in turn 1, they usually lose. Yeah. Because... Vintage is an unfair format, and Eldrazi is fundamentally a fair deck. It's trying to tax you and stop you doing broken stuff whilst they deploy some creatures and win via creatures. No. It's weird when you call a deck that can power out a Fortnite, Fortnite Seer on turn one off a Mana Crypt a fair deck, but it's technically a fair deck, right, in this format. So what am I up to here, Sahaf? I think you're uh, switching around... Something like bringing in an extra mind break trap or something because you're on the draw now, right? Yeah. And the odds of them having the explosive turn one and locking you out of the game. It could well be what high. I'm doing. Maybe I'm just next leveling and making him think I'm siding. Do nothing, shuffle deck up again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Apparently it's good practice, but it takes a lot of time. That's one of the Gosh, issues that yeah. I find. But yeah, I can I can see bringing in a second mind break trap when you're on the draw, mm. and you're like, this is the decider. I need to make sure you don't just explode and win on turn one. Not yeah, win definitely. on turn one, but set up to win and essentially. To be honest, I think that's actually a really good idea to mm. um to to keep it in on the draw and have it out on the play. Nice to have kind of like six force of wills in the deck, so to speak. Mm. You still get blown out by um, Cavern of Souls on force of will. Uh, Cavern of Souls naming something, and then you can't force of will it, but you can exile the creature card. Uh, via uh, Mind Break Trap. So I think Chad's mulliganing, uh, sorry, uh, Chad's sideboarding something interesting as well. He's obviously got those containment priests mm. to come in that would have already been in, so I don't know what he would be changing exactly, but. He might be changing up based on being on the play, possibly. Mm. You know, trying to go well. Well, if he, he has a null rod type effect, and he wants to play yeah, the a thing is something like um, Eldrazi Displacer, which he doesn't want on the draw. Yeah. Because it's not fast enough, and he yep. doesn't want to just switch on my oath. But on the play, he knows he's just got to get beaters out, and the Eldrazi Displacer is fast enough on the play. So it could be something like that. Yep. I can see that too. Yeah. So he's still deciding now. Uh, so on. In game three, after sideboards with Eldrazi on the play, who do you think's favoured? I think whoever's on the play is favoured. Mm. I think it's a really close matchup, and I think, as you say, whoever if Eldrazi gets that early turn one, turn two, you know, gas, then um, it's it's favoured. But I can play around that if I'm on the play and I've got a few lands out, or I get that. You know, even if it's got an explosive turn one, if I'm on the plane, I just have Mox, Mox Orchid Oath. Doesn't matter what he's doing. So I think it really just comes down to who's on the play. I think it's like a 60-40 split. Yeah, I can see that. So I um, can definitely see that. He won the die roll, so he's he got that 60%. It's big. It's big. <laughs> it's big. So here we go, going to seven. Correctly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's this hand look like? Some land? Yeah, I should show. I'm I'm a bad uh I'm a bad on the camera. Is I that a mind break trap? It is a mind oh, break yes. trap. It's lands. It's what is that on the far left? Oh, so Chad has a very slow hand. Preordain, I think. He's got uh, wasteland, but I don't think he has any additional 
fast mana sources. Was there a soul ring? We'll find out. It's very hard when they're when they're those special fancy cards. Yeah, he has to mull. He has to mull it. He knows. He saw how the game turned out when he did, when wow. he kept. So that this hand is a sweet time. hand for me. I've got dismember. I've got dread of night, and I've got mind break trap. So lots of answers. Even if he's got that cavern, I can um dismember it away. Uh, dismember away that thought not seer or something, and um. Yeah, the uh, Dread of Night, which switches off a huge amount of creatures and slows it down. I've got plenty of land, so... He is mulling here, so whilst it makes you kind of feel like, okay, well, I'm out of the wood, I'm getting out of the woods, the problem is, by him mulling, it actually starts to delegitimize your Mind Break Trap, because the odds of him exploding is slimmer. It's However, true. that's still fine. Yeah, I'm always happy for my opponents to mull. <laughs> <laughs> And we go to six. So well, what, he's looking for an explosive hand, but he doesn't realise that an explosive hand. And there's a lotus hand. Yep. It's pretty big. So he's looking for, I believe, land. Well, I had Caracas. So we've got Caracas and Lotus, so he can deploy two two minor threats. However, one will get mind break trapped. So he has to lead with Thalia, right? So if I'm on Eldrazi, I go land, uh, land, lotus, deploy Thalia, two minor Thalia. Because that means my Break Trap can't be played on your third spell. But I always play around my Break Trap, so it's different. <laughs> I just assume my opponent has my Break Trap, so I play around it. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, it's a conservative play. And I'm happy to run out Dread of Dread Night. Of I could Which keep up Dismember here, yeah. but... Well, Dread of Night turns off Thalia's, right? Yeah, I'm happy to just play it. Okay, yep, so he's got the Cavern of Souls now. So this is a really big, really big thing. You know, preventing you from being able to force of will what he plays next. So human, I assume. Could be Eldrowsy, I think. Eldrowsy, yeah. All right, Lotus. What is he going for? He's going for. He's playing around. Uh, playing around. Mind break trap by going with with the thought not seer. Yeah. Mm. There you go. It's a this good, is it's actually. Nice play. Yeah. So I've had a sweet hand. Uh, I've got Deluge there as well, but. Um, now he gets to take the dismember, and he knows about the mind break trap, and the grizzle brand was a bad draw. So because he's got the thought knot, he can just take the dismember, take and dismember. it's really hard for me to get rid of it. You know, thought knot's here when it dies, you get the card back, but what, you know, what's the relevance of that if you never get to kill the the thought knot's here? So I've got a pretty sweet um, turn three. Yeah. I can deluge. But he could try and play a Thalia or something. Mm. Oh, no, he can't play Thalia because he got Dread of Night. Mm. Dread of Night is essentially a preemptive removal spell for little guardians of Thraben. Yeah, I jumped down to a measly 16 life. So the clock is on. He's, he's drawn running lands, which is really good. You know, he needs the lands to be able to deploy all these threats. And... You've got to think he's running, out of, he's running out of gas here because yeah, he's Lotus and he's Mulled. Yeah. If this takes your toxic deluge, yeah. it's pretty much GG. It's it's incredible, isn't it? So from a fantastic hand, and I, and I had the force for it, but of course he's got cavern. So a fantastic hand where I think, okay, that's all right. I don't need the dismember. I've got the, I've got the deluge. Yeah. But then just two thought Nazis take both the cyborg cards that yep. are good against thought Nazis. So and now it's a two turn clock. It's pretty rough. It's really incredible, isn't it? But this is what Eldrazi does. It yeah. just, admittedly, it was a running lands. You need to draw draw pretty exactly for it to work, but uh, there's times where Eldrazi but explodes I mean, I, and there's I, times I, where yeah, it doesn't. I had three sideboard cards, and um, I still got blown out. Uh, in this deck, I, in this game, I should have actually kept up a land to dismember the Thought Not Seer yeah. in response to the ETB of the Thought Not Seer, but, you know, I, is it really a misplay? In hindsight, it was, but at, you know, at the time, I was just like, "Oh, jeez, well, you know." I think deploying the the um, dread of night is not ideal because, yes, it does turn off that ability to dismember something, but it also um, taps you out from him going thorn and then a threat, mm. so you can't force that you can't force. So it's all hindsight's twenty twenty bias, though. Yeah, I just here we go, sweet. <laughs> Nature's claim your own, you know. And I didn't claim the Mox because I think I need, need to mana. hit. I've got Oath, yep. and I think I need to hit Time Walk and Oath yep. to win. No, and I don't have Oath, game. but I need, yeah. 
So that's Well, that's it. what happens. Thought Thought Nazi is a strong, colourless Vendelian click, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really good. All right, nice. Well, let's move on to round four, and we'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.